I guess, you know, Michael, you touched on a, on a great point, which is the fact that if you're looking at applications that benefit everybody in the world, uh, let's talk a little bit more about that. How do you think blockchain and AI, for example, can really benefit humanity? I mean, I'd like to say thanks for everybody uh, that's coming out. Thank you for the sponsors between Joe and Cage Chain and all everybody else that's downstairs. My name is Michael McNair. I'm the founder of 55B Labs. We do neuroscience research data and we make AI products. The first one we have on the market is Cody, which is sentiment analysis for workplace morale. We create reports and analytics in real time to send us HR and C-level suites. Uh, we also now also have an academy that focuses on bridging the gap of uh, data science engineers and little, little uh, neuroscientists. So I'm happy to be on the panel and happy to share uh, my thoughts. Cool. Thank you. Uh, so uh, what I'll say about that is uh, I'm actually, there's a, a couple of different things that I heard, but so I come at this at a different particular perspective, so I'm not going to really talk about bias because um, you, can, you can either try to lower the accuracy of your data set by, using, by trying to take out bias or try to manipulate the algorithm in some way, shape, or form, but the bigger companies that you guys are talking about, they made trillions and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars because you know, most of the country is 70% uh, Caucasian, which because certain things don't get aligned of people of color, we're minorities, about 42 million African Americans in this country, uh, we have to, I have to look at it from a different lens. So uh, in, in my, pr in my pr uh, perspective, I would say blockchain is the layer on top of AI. AI is an electricity. Uh, blockchain are the coils that go around it when we talk about securing data. Um, data in itself is everywhere. It's very unstructured. It's very messy. So when you, when you want to go in and, and, and try to reconstruct a data set based off of whether it's writing an algorithm that can change a data, data set or that look for bias, those things take compute power, they take time, they take money, they take resources. So you have a lot of these larger in industries, uh, companies that didn't take that in consideration probably because of the fact they might have not had anyone in the room to say, hey, I think that's an issue because they, you know, this is what's going on in the algorithm, um, or the, we, we call them models. So I think that the companies that are coming out now, a lot of them are inclusive. If you look at startups, if you look at individuals that are, are really trying to put a foot forward, whether it's females or people of color or, you know, LGBT, et cetera, et cetera, I think that has to start from the beginning. And I mean, even from a blockchain perspective or an AI perspective, um, I think a lot of individuals are gonna start to see, you know, more inclusive results globally because I think that's where the true power is. I think the true power is in global distribution, but some companies will, you know, will be able to market to certain industries and other companies won't be able to market to certain industries. And some people will look at another individual's team and say, hey, look, um, I'm not working with you. And, and that's, I think, when it's gonna start to hit individuals' pockets. Um, and when it starts to hit individuals' pockets, then maybe they'll take into consideration that it's not just 335 million people in the world uh, and 7.2 billion. So I think, uh, it, so that's... I guess, you know, Michael, you touched on a, on a great point, which is the fact that if you're looking at applications that benefit everybody in the world, uh, let's talk a little bit more about that. How do you think blockchain and AI, for example, can really benefit humanity? I mean, I look at global healthcare. Um, I was at a, a, a symposium yesterday that's talking about technology being able to change the arc of global health. And when you look at all of the different patterns in health that you're looking at on, from a global population perspective, this is something that's really important because if we're not able to see those patterns because we don't have access to inclusive, broader, more um, complete data sets, um, and being able to develop the algorithms that then can be trained on those uh, data sets, um, how do you see that benefiting humanity? I'll, I'll pass it down to Michael. So, uh, I'll Thank you for the question. So getting back into healthcare, I've been in healthcare for, I would say, five years now. I worked in healthcare in New York and, you know, immediately got out here and really focused on mental health. That's our big broad, one that helping a billion people in, in mental health, uh, maintaining and managing. So I would say on that particular perspective, we're looking at, uh, if you're looking at the healthcare, the healthcare industry, it is 
blue water when it comes to the capabilities of being able to send, whether it's financial data or HIPAA uh, uh, encrypted data from here to, we can say, Egypt or wherever. Um, I think there are a lot of things happening in other continents and countries that people can't see or see different patterns or even make even transactions. And I think that is where a lot of, whether they're head funds, investments, firms, really know where the, where the money is and where the product should go because there's things happening in certain countries where they are just leaping over technology. So when you see that pattern, you, know, you see countries like China and uh, Africa, things, and continents like Africa, you can tell just by taking a step back and looking at the data, things are, are starting to leap and they're happening, they're happening really fast and it's scary. It's scary. So I think, um, I think that at the end of the day, healthcare is one of the most private things that we hold true to us and one of the most delicate. Um, but I think also we're at a point where all of these changes can happen now for the next 20 years. Um, and I'll be speaking at the DataX Summit actually next month for healthcare.